welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of round two of live live coding with Alan, I guess. Um, I don't know how I didn't get to this page. So I was messing around with uh, trying to do some Python module testing or whatever. Um, and I kept hitting this page for the longest time on Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. I mean, I was trying to do exactly what it said in the example and it didn't work. Um, so I created a Stack Overflow and somebody in the Stack Overflow said, ah, that's kind of a weird way to do it. Why don't you look at this? So looking at this. Um, uh, I may be good to look at that later. But yeah, just it feels like the thing that I'm after seems like it should have been much more quickly available. So I did get to the one, but it just didn't work. Uh, so whatever. Anyways, this time, what I'm going to try, uh, I actually don't want to have it open right now. It's my Django test, or my Django, going through Django for beginners. Um, what we can do is what? Uh, where did I create? So I tried to make, I'm not going to worry too much about that testing stuff right now. I want to go, I want to move on. Like I'm, I've got a way that I can do that. I think I'm set up there. So that's cool. Uh, what I want to do now is let me find where'd my hello world go. There it is. Dev hello world CLA. So let me clear this out because what I want to try and do now is figure out how there's it, it seems like there's a way to install a Python application or Python script or module or whatever as a command line tool um, without so like you could easily just throw the script in uh, in your path and call it and execute it and, and have it go. But I'm looking for a way to actually like so if you have more of a more complicated not just a single script but something that like needs uh, modules. And there's something I found called pipx. That looks like it can help with this. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at the comparison. I want to see that. Pip is general. Pipx. Okay. Or CLI applications with entry points, right? Pipx is specialized. It can only be used to install packages with CLI endpoints. Yeah, so we're gonna make endpoints. That was the key that I needed to figure out and I got the other day was finding endpoints. Um, Pipx was me. Replaces a subset of Pit's functionality. Let you install CLI applications, but not libraries that you import in your code. You can install Pipx with Pip. Cool. Pipx solely for application consumption. You install CLI apps with it. Yeah, see, this is good. Pip environment and poetry are CLI apps that develop things. All three wrap pip, okay. Uh, virtual environment is Python standard library. It's part of Python standard library, all right. Create virtual environments. Pipx relies heavily on the VNV package, virtual environment package. Uh, example, pip x installs packages over to environments created with VNV. Got it. Py my, manages Python versions. What's pip psi? Pip psi is no longer to maintained. Pip x makes sure I always have the latest version of pip. Build around pipx looks like. I just wanted to see what the other tools were. Pip versus brew. Then solve from distant sources. Brew lets you curate repositories specifically for brew. Pipx generally uses. All right. Okay. What's npx? Both can install CLI tools. 
npx will search for them in node modules. pipx search py packages. npx works for JavaScript, pipx works for Python, okay. Both tools attempt to make running executables in dynamic languages, okay. So npx, I know that was a thing, that's cool. Pip runs focus uh, arbitrary code in external environments. Example interaction, none. These tools, oh, work with different languages. I didn't see the example interactions on some of these. Okay, whatever, cool. Uh, otherwise installed during pip. Yeah, that ensure path thing. I've already done this, but we're gonna do it again. Yeah, ensure path basically put, make sure it is on your path. Upgrade pickup, pip x, shell completion. You can easily get your shells tab to work following instructions printed with this command. Install picks up pip out cell numbers. Whatever. Okay, so how do we set up what is pip x how's it different from pip features install package yeah so Starting from source control, running application through temporary environment. Running from source control, running from URL, yeesh. Summary, testimonials, credits. Okay, how do we make Python endpoints? Oh, wait, it's a package? Quickest API builder in the West. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. Getting started with APIs, creating web APIs. This is not, oh, entry points. Got it backwards. There we go, entry points explained. Let's try that one, first result. Prototype was over, so come to dinner and it worked. All right, Sneak is a service. Unfortunately, customers don't know about Python except for Sneak. They want easy access to Sneak from any path in the shell without needing to worry about Python. So gals over in R&D worked all night and came up with a package, way to package Sneak in a way that automatically creates a console script when it's installed. This is what we're looking for. When you create a distribution for Python package, you need to have a setup file that contains the package's name, dependencies, etc. It can also be registered. It can also be used to register entry points, and it looks like this. This is super helpful. Console scripts, they say, is a special type of endpoint. Setup tools reads it as console script name, Python object path. And creates appropriate script when your package is installed. Right now they're installing it from source. Python setup develop. I don't know what that means. Take the stage and present the worldwide route. Sneak. Sneak for everyone. Everyone will sneak. Hipsters are demanding a fancy version of sneak and your R&D team delivers. Import, doc op, normal sneak, fancy sneak. I, this is, I actually really like this. This is really well done. It 
main, get sneaks, return normal or fancy. So main, dock opt. I don't have a dock. I don't know what dock opt is. Language for description of command line interfaces. Oh, I was looking at like args parse earlier. I think that says the same thing. I may use args parse when I try it, because that's inside the main thing. Sneak, args type normal, right. Setup tools. They're patching cute sneak, but they also need to let sneak know how to find cute sneak. They register the cute sneak variable in the cute sneak module under the name cute. Now they install both sneak and cute. CD in the sneak sneak Python setup develop. What is Python set up to develop? Like this, this, uh, this person on Twitter? Whoops, all kinds of crap there. <laughs> Please rewrite somebody, to, that's awesome. Follow me on Twitter. We will follow you on Twitter. How do you only have 292 followers? Well, now you got 293. So, most people know entry points as little snippets that you put in your setup py file to make a package available as a script on the command line. I think these are much more. As a modular plugin architecture. So, super useful if you want to let other people write Python packages that interact or add abilities to your existing Python package. Guys, over on doing work all night. When they come with the package, you might have. You need to have a setup file that contains the package's name, dependencies, etc., and can be used. It can also be used to do that. So, what is Python setup develop? Well, so, uh, hey, what's up, Velcro? Is mine new? Did I flip it? Or yours is new? Well, you're probably saying mine's new because you would have noticed it if yours was new. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, did I change it? I must have changed it. Oh yeah, I changed it. That's right. Yeah, the uh, I don't know why. I just flipped it out. I need to write a bot to do that more often just to have it go. Um. Python setup py develop. What's the develop version of install? Creates a special link to site package directory. 
People have suggested install, refresh, install, Python stuff develop after changes have been made. Install is used to install typically third party packages that you're not going to develop yourself. For your own stuff, you want to first install your package and then be able to frequently edit it the code without having to reinstall the package every time. And that is exactly what Python setup de deploy does, develop does. Installs the package, typically just the source folder, in a way that allows you to conveniently edit your code after it's installed to the virtual environment. Note that it's highly recommended to use pip install dot and pip install e to install packages as invoking setup pi directly will do the wrong things for many dependencies. Such as pre-releases. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I want to try and make a command line, like I, I want to make a script in Python, but then install it so it's just a command line script, um, which you can do by just like putting it on your path and dropping it in there. But like, I want to figure out how to like deal with like dependencies and libraries and all that other stuff. Um, and I think I've found the answer with these entry points things. But the way my luck's been going the past week with development stuff, I'm heading into a world of pain. So we'll see what happens. Um, because this also, there's this other thing called pipbacks. Anyways, we're going to try this. We're at the point where I think I've got enough going on that we're going to see what happens. Um, oh, yeah, you'll notice I switched back to the Tron looking uh, thing of a Bob. Hopefully, that doesn't screw with your eyes. Uh, okay, get that. So, okay, so this is going into sneak main. Okay, they wrote sneak.py. Name sneak, sneak, sneak main. All right, so we're gonna do this for setup tools, for setup.py. So it's weird because like I almost want to start a virtual environment because I'm afraid if I run this, I'm going to freak stuff out. Um, name. Uh, say hello world. WRLD. Console scripts. Oh, 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 okay, so here's the command, here's the file, and or here's the, yeah, okay, I think I get this. Where, I want to see the directory structure that would be helpful for this. If name equals main, do main. So this is in sneak pi. Is that next to this? Or is that a directory down? Let me see if I can figure that out real quick. Uh, I have one million tabs open, which I don't really need to have. Entry points, okay. See, this was the first page that I got into and I was just like, uh, I, I was tired and I did not read it. The group an entry point belongs to indicates what sort of object it provides. For instance, right, okay. Name identifies the entry point within its group. The precise meaning of this is up to the consumer. For console scripts, the name of the entry point is the command that will be used to launch it. Okay. And 
entry points. Within a distribution, entry points should be unique. See, like there's all this other stuff, but now it shows you the. Setup, setup, pi, entry point. Building and distributing packages with what's the thing? Create Python eggs. Setup, pi. Setup tools collection and enhanced in Python disk utils. Create simple applications and frameworks for automatic discovery using simple entry points declared. Got it. Can you show me those? Nope. I need to open a new window. I'm on a space. Python entry points. Like if this wasn't gonna install something on my path, I'd just fire it up, but. I wanna have a little bit of an idea of what's gonna happen. Here we go. Packages may provide commands to be run at the console. Such a command. These commands are defined for a package as a specific kind of entry point and set up config or set up pi. First consider an example without entry points. Timmons, Timmons. Imagine a package defined thus with init as hello world and main providing a hook from dot import hello world. Main hello world. After installing the package, the function may be invoked that way. But a console script entry point allows the package to define a user-friendly name for installers of the package to execute. Installers like pip will create wrapper scripts to and execute the function. For example, to create a command hello world, that invokes timmons.hello world, add that, okay. So it is this, this name doesn't matter. It's right here that matters. That name thing a second ago confused me. Um, so it presides GUI scripts, which will launch GUI applications without running a terminal window. Oh, neat. After installing the script, user may invoke that through the command line. The syntax for entry points is specified below, where name is the name of the script you want to create. The left-hand side of the colon is a module that contains your function, and the right-hand side Yeah, oh, so it should say name and then module that contains the function and the right hand side is the object you want to invoke. For example, a function. Okay, gotcha. So say hello world is here. I just want to, I want this to be different than this. And now I need to figure out what all we're going to do. So And yeah, so I ha I was doing it with with a top level script because I was thinking you would just call this, but really this is saying what you want to do is go into Hello World. Uh, 
if name main. All right, I'm not sure I have my head around this, but we'll see what happens. Because I want to, I want to have classes in here. Um, def say hello world. Here we go RLD world self print. Hello world. It worked. So HW So it's calling that, which is, wait, where is Hello World coming from here? It's here, but that's a weird call, right? That's not making sense to me. Here's def Hello World. It should, it's just calling it straight from an it. Yeah, it's not, I don't think it's hitting this. I think it's just calling it here. So would you do, would you drop it in a knit? And main.py providing a hook. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Because, like, part of me wants to be able to call to hit the script directly, which I guess you could execute in it. Yeah, okay, let's try that. So I'm gonna burn this. And it is gonna be def hello world. Well, let's just do this. Hello world one. Let's see if that works. So that's internet. Set up. Say hello world. It's gonna go into Hello World. Hello world. Hello world, hello world. All right, so there's that. That's just calling that. This doesn't, oh yeah, so that's, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm not actually using this module right now. I'm gonna leave it there for a minute because we're gonna come back to it, I think, hopefully. Test shouldn't matter. Okay, so now uh, Python three M V N V. Oh wait, oh, I got one. S E A. Get into the virtual environment. Pip install pipx. Whoops. Uh oh, that's bad. Uh, 
Pip list, yeah. And then you just do pip install. Pip list, I should have, whoa, oh, whoops. Pip X list. Yeah. And so does that also happen inside the virtual environment? Why is it typing up there? What's that happening? I don't know what's going on there. Pipx list. Yeah, okay, so they're all... Virtual environments are in user analysis, local Pipx, VNV. Apps are exposed on your path there. Package, causeway two, causeway. Okay, cool. So Pipx install setup. Dot pi, see what that does. Can I have a version that satisfies a requirement? Versions none, no matching directories. Set pi, okay. Pipx install dot. Uh oh, it's doing something. Whoa. Oh, no module name found Hello World. Okay. But it didn't install. No module in the Elm found Hello World. Uh, should have been. That's right there. It's right here. So, where is that? But it did something. That's cool. So. What does it say? Uh, I probably need to do the new terminal. I didn't up the font. Say hello world. That's cool though. That's very cool. Get the font ring, I'll see it. I've also switched to night mode. I'm messing with that because it got kind of dark in here or light in here, right? Whatever. One of those things, the opposite of the other. So why did that happen? What was the error? From hello world, import hello world. No module named Hello World. So that was there. That's there. Uh, what if we just do this? I feel like I'm missing something on that post. Nope, nope, nope. Wait, is that it? Nope. Init. From dot import hello world. See, I can't tell what it's actually. Let's make a main. Wait a minute. From dot import hello world. So it's picking that up. That has to pick it up from here because it's not anywhere else. Hello world. We're trying to call hello world, but that didn't make sense.
I was smart, I would just do the exact same thing that they did. So that's main. There's a net. And setup's there. Running packet to name, cool. Already seems to be installed, not modifying existing installation. Pass, use force to force, let's do it. Okay, force goes somewhere else. Use dust force. How about there? There we go. I could make that fun a little bigger too, couldn't I? Yeah, probably. Oh, it's giant. It's giant, it's giant, it's giant. All right, you're installed. Crap. From Hello World, import Hello World. Alright, let me do what I think it wants me to do. So we're in Hello World. Well, actually, hang on. First, can you just do it this way? What if we do this? That doesn't make sense because it should have hit that. Whatever, we'll try it, see what happens. Now that I've done it once, I'm less freaked out about it. And also I see that I can, it's its definitely going in a virtual environment, almost certainly. So I think I'm okay with it. Or I think I can deal with it. No module. Named Hello World. Why don't we Google no module found error? How about that? Let's see what we get. This is awful. First, you want to go access. Any one from our, and many modules from page one. You need to probably set up files and packages of modules. Python treat the directories as containing packages. This is done. So yeah, so you need a nets. Okay. Describe from. The documented solution to this is add man1.py to synth path. Yeah, we don't want to mess with that. Okay, we're close. We're close. We got something working. All right, let's try this. What if we just do this? Is that going to work? Callable suffix is required. Let's do this. I really hope I had that spelled right the whole time. It's weird. It's the second time today where I've had documentation that didn't like, like that I've 
followed, I thought I followed, and it didn't work. The other one I'm pretty certain that I followed. Uh, in fact, let's see if anybody's written back about it. All right, we're here. We're gonna go into Hello World, which is here. We're right next to it, right? Yes. And then we're gonna get into Hello World. H-E-L-L-O, oh, oh, okay. Wait, crap. Did I spell it right? I'm just gonna go like HW because I keep looking at Hello World and it keeps getting weirder and weirder to me for some reason. From Hello World, import Hello World. Seems weird. Didn't think so. So from Hello World, import. Oh my god, that's it. Wait, no, maybe not, because I had it misspelled everywhere. All right, let's see what happens here. Oh, no module named Hello World. Oh, you know what? Whoa, hang on. Hang on. Comment this out. Comment this out. Where's a net? Leave that. Hey, the white line disappeared. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I wish it was gray right now. What I really wish would happen though, is for this to work. Oh, oh come on. Hello world, hello world. No module named Hello World. <sighs> Wait, no. Wait a second. What's the name of this folder? Hello World TLI? Is it looking for the folder that it's in? Where's the structure of that? Where's that other one? Uh, I'm never gonna find it. Is that it? Yes. To sneak, it's calling it in the same. It 
So it's definitely doing that. Okay, let's make a file up here with it. hw1.py def hw1 print hw1 save hw1 HW1. Oops. Once I figure this out, I will figure it out. And I will make my own notes that make sense, because those notes are not doing what I think they should be doing. X, no module found error. Right? That was called module not found error. Close. Should probably do the actual error. Let's try that. Number three. Break every single package I install. So gonna... I was left with these type of errors. Uninstall pipex Python version. Not for me. See, it certainly seems like it's installing it. Installation. Getting started. and other tools, programs to try, Ansible. Jupyter Notebooks, light, sweet. How, okay, so let me look, actually, let's go look at some source code. How about that? Wait, why isn't this working? HW1, HW1. No module named HW1. All right, where is PS cow, pi cow say? I want to look at it, source code. Because I want to see how they're doing it. Because that installed. So set up. Ooh, they got all kinds of stuff in here. License, where's entry point? Entry points, console scripts. PyCalSay.main. Main. PyCalSay.main. Main. But that's there.
And we tried this already, I think, right? Hello. Right here. Let's do this. New file. New directory. HW2. New file. HW2. Dot pi. And then it just had def main, right? From Texrax, dedent. That syscall doesn't. Oh, wait a minute. It's calling main, but then it gets called. Let's just do all that. So this is going to be hw2.hw2. Man. Installing to existing directory. Yes. Install a package that these apps are now globally available. Say hello world. Oh. Is that because I'm in a virtual environment already? That's the whole point. It's supposed to like make its own thing. Like it should be independent. Yeah. Okay. What's going on? Nope. Pitbacks version. 15.6 Same thing. Uh okay, let's go look at its setup file. Setup entry points. Console scripts here. Let's just do this. The same. Entry points, console scripts, list with the thing inside of it. And it goes down directory and HW2. Is there a main file? Was that a main file? Hang on. Goes into here. Goes into main. No, it's not that main, is it? No, but it still says there's no module. Ugh. It feels like it's bumping up a degree above. Main. 
dot pi. I just want to see a different error. If I see a different error, I'm cool. Oops. Come here. No module name HW2. That didn't have uh, an init pi up here, right? Nope. Does it need to have, do we need to tell like directories somehow? From setup tools import setup. Say the word hw2 dot main, but it can't find hw2. Got that HW2 there. Whoops, look at all that. We got all this HW2. There's that. that okay it says main everywhere now <laughs> let me just make sure it's not something stupid like this Say hello world one five. All right, let's actually go look at this file and see what's happening here. We can go do that. From hw2 dot main import main. User local bin. Say hello world. Uh, there's nothing. So how? Wait, wait how does Cal say get it? Uh, Cal say. From Cal say dot main. Import CLI. But somehow it finds that.
in here. Say hello. Oh, okay, so there's the name of the thing. So there's nothing in there. Site packages. Calse. Main. So somehow that's getting installed versus this site packages. Say hello world info, but there's no oops. So somehow it's doing its own thing there. These are all just copies of the same thing, which is boring. Hmm. Also install from a git, walk through, running application in temporary virtual environment, Pipex downloads. Yeah, so you can run from source control. So is it, hmm. Is it something, hang on, where's that setup file? Find packages. Not sure if I've got everything lined up right. Hello, world two, whatever. Main. That's probably in there. Well, there it was. Ah, <laughs> too late. Crap. HW two. Dot main. I don't actually have a dot main in there. HW2, HW2. <sighs> I feel like I'm missing something simple. So 
Second time today. And I'm about to copy and paste this exact thing and see what happens. Not found. Okay, we're gonna copy and paste it. Um So here we go. This is sneaked up high. Uh, uh CD desktop. Make their sneak or uh, let's just do it sneak. Test. I want the name to be different. Um here, let's do this code. You file, paste. Sneaked up high. Sneak test, sneaked up high, save. Run. There's a sneak. Yeah, Python sneak, it worked. Sneak as a service from setup tools, import setup. Name sneak, console script sneak, sneak main. not going to do that. I want to do the pip x install. I mean, so that's what's different here, right? Is I'm doing a slightly different thing. Pip x install sneak. No, install dot. Because I wanted to hit the setup file. Uh, wait a minute. I don't know. No module found name sneak. Where's that pie cow thing again? Find packages, dependencies exclude from packages. Name, Pascal Sag, version, Chad Smith, author, description, look long, packages, fine packages. This is going to be the line we need to have. I believe. Let us see, first off, if we can format it right. Oh, needed to force it. Let's get a yell. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. That was supposed to work. I think that's the right path though. That has to be the right path. Okay, so here, we're gonna go back to here. Find packages. We're gonna do packages, find packages here again. I feel like this is definitely the right track. Say hello world, say hello world. Console scripts, hey, hello world. So HW2 is here. We're gonna hit HW2 and then we're gonna hit main. Please work. That's the wrong thing. 
Where's my say? Ha! I win! <sighs> okay. That's a blog post. So we didn't actually need this, so now what I want to do is get everything out of here that we don't actually need. If I can get rid of all this stuff, because I... I I'm relatively confident I can get back to it. It's that fine package, and I bet if you don't, whoops, should have done. Can you undo that? Nope. That's okay. We're just gonna get rid of all this for a minute. Delete. Oh, it's weird. Delete. Switch places there. Hello world. Okay, so set up. Here, let me close all these. I just want a clean start. Say hello world. Say hello world. Okay. I was trying to think of what the best way is to make these things. Say hello world, CLI. I want good names, is what I'm looking for, just so I can say. Rename that. See, I think I'd switch places. Words to say. All right, so we're gonna do a couple things. One, yeah, okay, I'm gonna. So we're gonna delete main here. And we're gonna delete a net because I th and I think that's gonna freak it out. Because what we're gonna look for say hello world equals. Words to say. Hello world, man. Which there isn't a man in there. That's okay right now. Uh, no, let's put the man in there.
All right, so there's a man over here. All right. Do that. No module words to say. Right, so it couldn't find it because there's no init in here. So you gotta have the init. I think it can be empty. I think that'll fix this. There you go. Okay, so that's that's it. You gotta have, it's gotta have a package. You gotta have that find packages or you gotta define the packages. Um, which I guess technically you probably put my test in there, which you don't really need. Sweet, okay, that's it. Now the question is, how can you do well, so let's do this first. sneak test yo uh oh it's getting all crazy crazy up in here I just solved something after an hour and 15 minutes that I'm very happy with and I'm I'm very pleased with it earlier today I was on for about three hours trying to solve one thing and I couldn't get it to work. And I'm like, are you familiar with Stack Overflow? I can't remember. I think we've talked about it before. Um, but it's like where you go for all the questions answer stuff. Like I went to a tutorial, I did exactly what the tutorial said and it didn't work. And so now I've put a question up on Stack Overflow and it's been there for five hours and there hasn't been any answers yet. Granted, it's Sunday night, but still, that makes me a little suspicious that maybe that tutorial wasn't wrong. It was wrong, even though it's been on the net for like forever. It's kind of weird. Anyways, how's it going? Get finished with the grading. Uh, tree. Whoa. What's all this? I don't know what all this is. Never finished. The, uh, is it mainly written stuff or is it mainly videos? I saw some videos go by on the chat or on the Discord or whatever. I have no idea what all this stuff is. Oh my god, here. Oh, it's a virtual environment. Okay, I don't need that. Um, we don't need virtual environments. Virtual environments are for people who live virtually. I don't know, got nothing. So we don't need to read, uh, read me. I'm not gonna worry about tests in this example. 
We don't need a net. We do need a net, sorry. That's the structure. That's the structure. Very simple now that we get down to it. Yeah, and like, Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't know how, well, so I don't have any idea how to grade at all, um, but like, it was really interesting, so I listened to some of the speeches a while ago, um, and it was funny, because it was like, I could hear, you could tell they were new at it, basically, but like, that doesn't bother me, it's like, and it's like, I like coding stuff, like, sometimes people come on here, ask me questions, like, it's cool, you're figuring the stuff out, so, how, how do you do based off of where you are, right? Oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> um, when they start, when they're in the corner shivering and shaking, possibly you went too far. Possibly. Um, where? setup.py. See, this is funny. I'm going to show you. I spent... I'll show you the full thing here in just a second. Words to say... It pi empty words to say hello world dot pi. By the way, you like my interface here? Looks like Tron to me. I love it. this work? Nope. So to give you an idea here, hang on a second. Cross assignments and students. Students often go back and forth. Write some stats on average and mean paper grades versus presentations. Oh, okay. Oh, students go back and forth between presentations and papers. I gotcha, I think. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then I was messing around with the colors on this one and I turned it to like mint chocolate chip, inverted, but um, yeah, so to, to give you an idea, it took me an hour to come up with all of this and the only real difference that I, the place I started, this didn't exist and that didn't exist. Took an hour to figure out those two things. Welcome to programming. Um, which actually I think it's one of the reasons that like there's that whole thing of like everybody should learn how to code. I'm not sure, I really am not sure everybody has the patience basically to do it um it's a little nuts after dinner met in python yeah oh it's funny the uh they actually did a pretty fun thing the t one of the tutorials i saw that didn't quite get me there but got me pointed in the right direction uh was using this ascii art of this little sneak which i'm going to totally steal and then the fancy sneak uh, and then there's another one down here somewhere. Cute sneak. Which I think is just awesome. I'm going to copy these right now, as a matter of fact. I think I did... I'll just do that. Probably violating all sorts of copyright right now. So there's any more down here before I get there. Oh, there's all three of them. 
Whoops. Crap. I've decided to start collecting ASCII art. As of about... Well, I've been thinking about it for a little bit. And then... Because I know I've seen some good stuff that I'd never copied down. And like, I can go out and find a bunch of it or whatever. But like, as I run across it, let's look at some ASCIIs. I, so I, I do think it teaches patience if... Or I, I think it has the capability of teaching patience if you make enough progress. And I think there's some... Um, some stuff out there that basically talks about the idea of and you probably are familiar with all this stuff but like you want something that is hard enough to do that it's challenging but not so hard that it feels insurmountable and especially when you're first in this stuff like it's really easy for it to feel insurmountable like the stuff that I was doing like I tried 30 things and none of it worked but like the thing that I know is that it can work. So it's just that I haven't found the solution yet. When you when you click it that way in your head, it makes it easier to deal with. But still, it just like takes a while. Um, but yeah, that that code book that I was telling that I showed you, I think you've read some of it or maybe all of it. I can't remember. Um, talks a lot about the foundations of computers and the ones and zeros. And like once that really clicked in my head, it's like all this stuff really is possible. It may be that I have to build an entire operating system to interconnect with it to do it, which is, you know, out of scope, but it's all, it's all possible. Um, so as long as, if, if the interface is there, you can do it. If the interface isn't there and you really want to make it, you can. Um, I don't want to spend that much time doing it though. Uh, also, yeah, this is, I went to night mode on the Mac and so like, the browsers have this gray tone now. I kind of like it. And you're you're all purple and stuff. It's cool. very cool. Feeling very. That's not quite as Tron as that browser. Um, I need to I need to bump these colors a little bit. Because like the the intensity of this blue, I just love. I don't know if that if that's coming through. Um, and the orange, like it's just a really good kick. Uh, but I think there could be even more. Whatever. And it would be super cool is if you had like some of the glowy effect on it on some of the side stuff or whatever, get the whole Tron thing going, that would actually be super distracting, but um, it'd be neat to look at for a little while. Night mode. Yeah, when I first tried night mode, I, I wasn't into it. Um, but then I got more into it. Um, especially, so the other thing I think I'm gonna do, you were talking about getting other cameras or whatever. Um, I think I'm actually going to try and hook up my old SLR that's still really good. Um, because what I want to be able to do is turn off the lights or turn them way down because it's this is brighter than I would prefer it to be at night. And I want to see if I can bring it down but still have... And I, like, I don't mind throwing a little bit of light behind me for the green screen. But like I'd like less light over there like hit me in the face. Python 3, make virtual environment called virtual environment. Yes, please. Yeah, I, I kind of want to like remake my website like this now and like do my whole desktop so it's all this interface. Like I really, I, I was slipping through them the other day and I saw this, I was like, oh, it's amazing. Okay, so let's see, say, whoops, wrong place. Say, say, say. Speaking, oh, so good. Okay, so that gets us into here, but can we actually hit a class is the question. Because that would be super cool too. Uh, what do we call the class? Probably called it Hello World. What does that do? Um, I'm 
It's cool because I keep so I've got that YouTube thing that I want to do and then I want to do videos for it. But then I wanted to do the NASA videos to upload the videos for it. And now I need to do some rename stuff. And now I want to like do it as a command line. So I don't know if you're familiar with the term yak shaving, um, but this is very much yak shaving. But like it's cool because I'm making these tools. I only have to build this thing one. I only have to figure this out one time. Um, and now that I've got it, I've got it. Oh, look at this. This is actually good. Hopefully that means. So that's calling this class, which is an object. And hopefully I can call it inside it to this say hello by doing this. Let's see what that does. Uh oh, now now you're now you're messing with me. Whoops. Hang on a second. Let me throw it over to my browser that we can see stuff on. Also, I saw that my script exploded, so that's bad. Hmm. That one hurts my hurts my brain a little bit. Genome, yeah. Cinnamon. That's pretty. Yeah, and so I think I'm going to throw some calendar stuff over there. It's interesting. There's a uh, the way that I'm actually thinking about do it. Oh yeah, I think I've got an FFmpeg filter that can turn stuff into ASCII. So I think the NASA videos I'm going to make some that are just like ASCII art. See, I'm not as big a fan of the photos on the backgrounds. That's probably not surprising at all. Elementary OS two. I don't know elementary OS. I spelled that all wrong, but it's gonna get me there. Like, it's very elegant. Ah, uh, that's a neat photo. Oh, this looks like they did a Mac type thing. Little window stuff, yeah. How to revitalize your Mac or PC. Hack up. Multitasking view, yeah. Apps you need without the ones you don't. I dig it. That's good icon design. Uh oh, crashed. But yeah, so I've got. Uh... Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, so I don't know if you saw this, but like I can turn. So every now and then I need to like look at something that I don't want to throw it over the other monitor. So I do the blur stuff there. But it's fun to me because it looks like some type of weird, hier not hieroglyphic, but like secret alien language or whatever that they would use. Yeah, it's super fun. I kind of want to do, it's almost like QR code, but what I was, uh, I saw a text or a tweet go by today where somebody was asking what the first language was you wrote or what the language was that you first wrote your first computer program in. And like mine was when I was probably four or six or something on my grandfather's TI-99 4A. And all it was, was it would randomly select a character and then it would fill the screen randomly with it. Um, I want to rewrite that in JavaScript, but I think it'd be fun to like see some of that kind of stuff with that blur effect going. I keep pointing over there because that's where I see it. I know you see it here, here. Um, but I don't know, it's some fun, some fun things to think about with with that. Um, I'm really, my brain is definitely back on on thinking about that kind of stuff, um, which is very pleasant. Uh, anyways, yes, yeah, so red bad, just did not work well. Exit status one, say hello world CLI. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, reading the error message, by the way, is the real trick with um, with 
stuff. Oh, okay. So what you could do, hang on. You could just unknit it, right? So it's, no. How'd you do that? Python entry point class. Can you do it as a class or do you have to do it as a function? So basically what this is doing is I've got it set up now on the, so if I can type a command line thing and it goes and hits my Python stuff and runs, normally that would be harder to do because you'd have to move all the libraries and stuff with it and have them installed. This little technique that I'm using gets everything bundled up for me. But there's two ways to call it. You can like make an object and then talk to the object, or you can just have functions that are hanging out there and just trigger the functions. So I've got this one working. I need to figure out how to get the other. Or I'd like to figure out how to get the other one working. Not critical, but. Um, if I were not on pro user's best experience, you'll need that. Setup tools. You're done. Scripts. See, I've never hit this page before. Python for main, main. Yeah, okay, so it looks like they're just calling a function. So not going into class. That's fine. This is cool. See, this is one of those weird things where, like, the Google search results moved away from the thing that I needed to have. And this, until I figured out the right, until I figured out enough over here to research and kind of reset where I was headed. Like this, this is what I was trying to do from 2014. The, yeah, packages, see, there it is right there. That's what I needed. If I had just followed, if I had seen, if I got into this one first and just done it, uh, it would have been done in however long it took me to do the thing. But that's tech. Hmm, why is the main file name? It makes Python M project work. It's a special name for the interpreter. An improvement of last line of M would be exit return code as main. The main function can return error code or message in case of failure. Usually two for wrong command line. Depends what you're using. For example, arg parse would just handle this for you automatically, but yes, that's line could be used. Yeah, so now... So that's the basics. I got the basics down, which is sweet. Yeah, and actually you can roll off... This... Yes, yeah, so this has to be a function. That's okay. Words to say. It's gotta call a function. That would be a good structure for that. Main pi. Oh, but then you'd have to import it. Hmm. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know if I want to do that. first thing I should do, let me just get this running with this. So net can be clear. That can be this. Hello world. Main. Setup. Main. 
find packages we aren't going to use. We're actually just going to call them as a list, I think. Yep, as a list. List is the square brackets. Words to say. Let's see if this works. Nope, oh, we definitely want that. Okay, I think this is going to work. It works. Yeah, so actually, I'm going to do this pi. Tag CLI. There we go. Oops. We only need this for right now. Now, how do we want to do, because I want to do class-based stuff. So when you call main, so when you call it, this, is, this thing, this stuff can be structured anyway, so it's kind of up to you to do it. Create a main file. In order to implement the first desired result, you need to create a main file in your package. When you're done, you'll have a project that could be executed by that or by main project. Check out my Python project template. I'll check that out. Are you on Twitter? Chris? Where your name is? Whoops, there we go. Twitter. Follow. point stuff a lot before even though I actually solved it before I got to his post but whatever it's still a good post read through all these comments at some point. See what else is there, but that's not for right now. So I'm not calling main right now. So we did that. Did I try this again? So that calls main. Okay, so how? what's the structure that we want to use for this? I think I just pinned that. Yeah, I did. Python project, a setup file using setup, setup pi file using setup tools, the following directory structure. We're done. You have our, yep, provided you have Python scripts. It's also working Windows. Oh, I wanted to see his Python template. Oh, he's got cookie cutter. Okay.
it's got a lot of stuff. I will look at that later. That's more than I am capable of processing right now. So I can its main function. Contains no arguments. And also special passage to determine to run. If args is none, args equals sys args one. This is the main routine. We should do something interesting. Do argument parsing here with args parse. Anything else you want to do code. Return values or exit codes. If name, name, idiom document here is used to check whether it's executed as a top level file or if it's been imported by somebody else. In this case, executing main function is not always intended. The main function must take must not take any arguments because that's how entry points execute things. Okay, good to know. Set up. Yes, you set up tools, otherwise this won't work. Most important pieces, entry points. Module with function, yep. Developing GUI, you can create multiple scripts this way. Oh yeah, so you could actually do multiple thing. I gotcha. All this is reusable. What if you mentioned when it got a form, it'd be really nice, that's cool. See what else you got. Um, so I like that main thing he was doing. And the sys exit. Because it calls, oh, okay, so it calls main. I gotcha. Def main. I don't really know if you need that. I don't understand this. If args is non, like you know args is non. I'm going to copy it anyways because I don't understand it. Do argument processing here if the args parse. Anything else you want? Yeah, so let's look at args parse. Oh, uh, sys exit main. I gotcha. And then. Where's the one somebody's talking about how to do an exit code? Or zero. The main function can return an error code or message in this case. In the case of failure, you usually leave for wrong. If it returns the default none, the script's exit with zero. Oh, okay, that's cool. Like that. So where's args parse? I was messing with that the other day. I did not document it. Arg parse, maybe I did.
What are... Hmm. Oh man, I've got another. Where was it? Uh, Python CLI. How to build command line with args parse. That's not what I want. Beautiful command line interfaces. That's the one I was looking for. Click. Sure. That one comes up a lot. Like literally first result. Yeah, so I went through this a little while ago, but I wanted to make sure I could get to the output. Oh, I need to check. Sorry, I'm still I'm floating around a little bit. Actually, I'm curious to see print args. Does this show? So we're going to hit main. Here. Speaking now. Ah, oh, didn't. Oh wait, speaking. It didn't hit it. What did I do? I did the wrong thing. We're set up. I'm still going there. CLI. Helpful links there. It's one of them. And this one. Not really this one, but it's the main docs, so we'll put it in there. Arcs parse. Click when you build click. Click, you can build with CLI easily compared to args parse. Click solves the same problems args parse solves, but do select different approach. Do it. Does it with decorators. Click command. Arguments and options like below. Argument name, option, greeting. I just saw this lightweight Python package for creating command line interfaces. An interface description in DocOp is such a helpful message, but formalized. Def say hello, name main, arguments, dot doc. doc. Doc version demo one. If arguments name print, see this is all. It's all foreign to me right now. I don't understand it. And why are you doing a thing? Sometimes examples are bad. Click argument name. Here, let me look at actually click stuff. Action, count, default one, help, number of greetings, command. 
def hello for x and range count I go name hello automatically creates a nice formatted web pages help pages why not our parse why not our parse Opt options instead. Uh, this is an implementation detail that users do not have to be concerned with. Click this on based on our parse because it has some behaviors that make handling arbitrary command line interfaces hard. Our parse is a built in behavior to guess if something is argument or option. If there's a problem with dealing with incomplete command lines. I mean, tools like it are cool in how they work, but very few of these tools deal with nesting of commands. Incompatibility by the click. Yeah, whatever. I, it's fine. I'll use click. Sounds great. Screencasting's out. Well, look at this. They've got... This is the right way to do it. Basic concepts. Creating command. See? Lots of good, not just documentation, but tutorials. Hello. Internally, there's a non-decorated advanced cases but it's discouraged for high Louise. The function becomes a click command line tool by decorating it through click command. At simplest just decorating a function with its decorator will make the make the call make it into a callable script. This is what it looks like. Oh, but I don't need that. I just need the options parsing. I don't need nested commands, options parameters. Oh, you stack them. Okay, I got it. Count, default, name, it's probably required. but it would still get called. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm gonna use, I wanna use args parse because it's not an extra library. Add argument dash view for help, view for help. Args parse args. I did something with arcs parse out here. YouTube runner, video assembler, Twitch bot, snake case names. Did I do it in snake case names? No. Page of Mechanic Tango for Bringers. Hello World CLI. Oh, I never tried this. Let's try this. Here, ASDF. Ah, it worked. We printed the args. Okay. So you can suck in. Args parse. Parser arguments, argument parser description, process some integers. Add argument integers. I did do this. Where did I do this?
Browser Cleaner, Django, FFmpeg, Hello World CLI is what we're in right now. Launchpad, NASA, Page Archiver. This is the only place I can think of. And, uh, import arc bars. Yeah, I just didn't do anything with it. Oh, was I in Code Runner? No, wouldn't have been Code Runner. I don't know. Who knows? We'll try it again. Parser, argument parser, add arguments. This is such a weird example. Still know what I did with that code. Probably just threw it away somewhere in there. By default, our parties objects use sysr to learn how to display the name of the program and help messages. Default values are almost always desirable. For example, yes, okay. Change default behavior usage. Add argument print help. Description, epilogue, parents. Formatting class. This is getting way deeper than I need, but that's okay. Yeah, I clicked here yesterday. Mirror flag. I don't actually need an argument processing for this. It's just, it's a straight, oh no, that's not true, I do. Um, oh, where did I do that? It would have been in snake case names. I don't need that for this, uh, but I do want to solve it for this because I want to make a good solid example. That's what I want. Because I only want to have to do this one time. So that's there. should be able to do since this is in main should be able to do from Hello world, uh, whoops. Import, hello world. So if sys exit main or zero. Okay, can I just run this right here as a test? Yes. Okay, and that called it. Okay, so cool, so that's how you can test it. Yeah, because all it's doing is calling main. Right, which is what this is doing. Ah, oh, this makes sense all of a sudden. Args equals sysargs from zero to one. Oh, okay, that's slick too. So you're just doing, you're skipping the name because you don't need the name.
tired. Uh, arc bars, arc bars, arc bars. Parser. If args is none, yeah, so you're automatically going to be there. I don't understand why. I don't understand that. Oh, setting a default is none, but you could do, you could pass something into it, but you would never pass anything into it. I'm gonna switch that out. This is such a weird example. Like, don't, like, do something with it. Don't like automatically just like mush stuff in. Args that accumulate. Come on, give me a break. Argument parser. Add argument. Add argument. Files. Type. File. In args equals plus. of files to update. Bring that back. But I don't think we need you. I don't think we need you. type. I thought you could make it a file. I can take callable choices. And open. By default, argument parser reads commands as a string, so however quite often a command line should be like a float or an int. Type keyword can add argument. Common built in. I must have hallucinated or been reading another one that said file. And you can open a file. Well, that ain't what we want to do. Yeah, just create as a string. That's cool. It's a string. We just leave it as it is. It's a parser. Args. Equals parse args. Is that angry? I don't like 
that. Required files, what? Oh, got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I'm doing the wrong file. For the argument in usage messages. We're not going to parse the generates help messages. Needs some way to reference. Argument, argument. Nope. Okay, that's not it. How do you get. Integers. Matter of fact, in. In args plus. Files. Managers. So it should just go. Oh. Whoops. Nope. That didn't work either. Namespace object is not iterable. Following arguments are required. Namespace object is not iterable. Okay, let me just see if this works. Okay, that functions. Print args. Namespace files. Oh, 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 cool. Files. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Dot files? It's dot files, okay. Okay, so let's do, let's make a thing here. Um, if arg files, oops. Hello world, otherwise, For uh, okay, how about this? People, P E A O P people. List of people to say I too.
for peep person and args people. Print hello person. So I can test this here. Nope. It has no word files. I goofed somewhere. Where did I miss it? Args people. That's uh, not doing what I expected. Printing it. Oh, if arx if length, how about this? If length arx people. So if it has a length, do it. Still didn't work. If length is greater than zero, try that. Arx people, right? Print arx people. It's a list. Okay. Again, I don't understand what's happening. Uh, If links are people is less than. It's, it says it's a list. What if we just try this? Okay, that caught it. So why isn't this working? Dur, Rx people, it must be some weird. Oops. Reverse sort, remove pop, it's a list. If Rx people. If length args people. Here, actually, I'm going to copy this. If it's greater than zero, which we know it is because we just printed out, print yo. Why the hell didn't that work earlier? Otherwise, hello world, otherwise, otherwise, it's not doing it again. Why isn't it doing it again? Because I'm doing no. If it's greater than zero, print hello world. 
I'm backwards. I can't do this math in my head right now. If it's equal to zero, how about that? There we go. The reason it wasn't working is because my math was wrong. I couldn't do greater than and less than. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that happened. That's pretty cool. Um, do you know what he's hired for? You can probably look it up. So this, by the way, it doesn't have to be this crazy looking. Like, all this stuff, all this stuff, like, you don't start kind of with that. Like, this, this is relatively simple, but... Like, all this other jazz is not required for getting started in it. You don't you don't start kind of looking through all this stuff. Uh, you start at a slightly different place that has much fewer things. Um, but this is cool, because I've got this working now. So there's that. And then also the real question. So that's going... And really what I want to do now is call... So, let's make sure that works. So, pip x install force this thing. That was the wrong place. Say... Hello. Oh, no module found. Hello world. I goofed something somewhere. What did I do? No module named hello world. I'm not calling hello world. Oh, it's calling this. Wait. Uh... Oh, yeah, because I want to do from dot. Okay, this is probably going to explode. Right? Can open for main. Oh, yeah. Words to say. Keep jumping directories. That did work. Oh, that wasn't supposed to work. From hello world, why didn't that work? Crap. <sighs> Doesn't like it. Hmm. is not defined. Okay. That got that. So is that going to let me do this. So that's running. Oh, come on. No module found. Hello, world. God. Ah. Set up packages, words to say. You're a bastard.
Oh, sweet. Good stuff, Bob. Get all... Are your CSS lined up? Nice. When I run into CSS issues, I will definitely come to you then, sir. Uh, I'm about to pass out trying to solve this one, though. I thought I had it working, and then it didn't do what I wanted it to do anymore. And that's kind of a bummer. Words to say. Oh, do I even need to import it? Hang on. There's no way this works. Because it's got to have... Well, first of all, I've got to be in the right directory. Yeah. So how do you do the imports then? Oh, and I fixed a couple of the things. I'm onto a new thing that I'm struggling with. I've got a, I've got it basically, I've got it working in a way that I can make it work. Um, now I'm trying to refine it down a little bit. So I'm making a, like a command line tool. Um, so this is just kind of that refinement iteration stuff. So I, I thought it, I can make it work if I don't put this in, if I don't try and call a class in another file. Like this works, it says hello world. Oh, I don't need to print this stuff anymore. It's super tiny down there at the bottom, but you can say hello, you can pass it and you can say you and you. Uh, a database for HTML. Um, so HTML doesn't really talk to databases. Um, you would use, generally speaking, you would have something like a database and then some software in the middle that then makes the HTML. Um, there's lots of things out there that can do that. Um, I'm working with one right now called Django. So Django talks to a database and it's a bunch of Python and then it produces the HTML. So your, your browser basically talks to a web server the web server has Django on it. Django talks to the database, does database stuff, puts it back, makes HTML and sh ships it back to you. Um, Ruby on Rails is another one I know, uh, like React. So the JavaScript stuff is out there too. Like there's a bunch of node stuff. I just, I haven't been in that world. I don't know what those things are. Um, but you want something to kind of talk to the database and then produces HTML. That's kind of the mental model. Yeah, so you'll need you'll need something on the server to to accept data coming in, um, or somehow to to actually like deal with the connection to the database. Um, you can write it in PHP, like uh, like one of the it it's fairly simple, relatively speaking to just make a PHP file and have it talk to a database and pull some stuff back to you. Never do that if you're accepting input from, an, from a user, only do that if you're just like you putting in the data in the database yourself. Um, but that would be one way to do it. And the, the databases to look at are like Postgres, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. This one. Uh, Actually, you should just look at this one. This is my favorite. Um, the uh, what? Do you know what kind of server you're running on? Because they may, and then like Heroku or whatever. But uh, sorry, the other. I should uh, SQL SQL. There you go. So MySQL, Postgres and MySQL are the two that get the most play. There's a bunch of databases out there, um, but this, these are the databases themselves. Then you need something to talk to the database. And that can be as simple as like PHP files sitting on your server um, or uh, something like Django, which is a full framework that also sits on your server, but then talks to it. Um, and then I'm not sure about the JavaScript world these days. I, 
I know there's you, I know there's React, I know there's Angular. I don't know which one of those talk directly to it or have to have something else in the mix. Um, but that's kind of where where you'd go. Um, the There may be PHP frameworks for it too. PHP, what was the PHP framework? PHP is really falling out of favor, by the way. Cake, I used to use Cake a long time ago. Oh, Drupal, that's not a bad one. I serve right now. Drivers code right now. You lost me on that one. Um, drivers code. Uh, oh, but yeah. So if you're not, I mean, you could use like Python and talk to a server and then build HTML pages too directly. Oh, this pseudo code. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you'd need something. So the first question is which database do you have? If you've got a database connection lined up, um, and then the question is where, like, how do you want to produce these files? So you could just have it like, you could just have a script that runs on your computer that talks to the database, makes the HTML and ships it up. Um, or you could have that happen on the, at the server level and have the server talk to the database and then mush it up. Um, but yeah, if you're not on a server and you're just looking to do it, you you need something to have. So HTML doesn't really have, people go back and forth right now about whether or not it's a programming language. I don't care. It doesn't have a way to connect to a database and um, build a page for you automatically. You have to have something else do that. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. All right, this one works. And if we don't pass arguments, does it work? Uh, how do you make arg parse optional? Arg parse optional. Many tabs. Oh, these question mark or star if you need more than one. Aha, star. That makes perfect sense. Uh, cloud server would do it. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you. You never need to buy another like physical piece of hardware again for a server. Like cloud stuff will take you all the way to what you need, um, and you can get some of the like the Amazon stuff for super cheap these days. Like um, they've actually got databases up there too. So like the they've got databases, they've got uh, Linux servers, um, they've got S3 buckets that you can throw files in. Like they, like any way that you can think of to do it, they've got it happening. Um, I think they've even got. Whoops, sorry, that was the wrong button. Um, Amazon web services website. They've got something light speed, light trail, light house. Light sail, maybe. Is that it? Virtual storage, server storage database and networking a lot of affordable price. Yeah, there you go. That's something to work look at. <laughs> How our programming language is made. Crazily, uh, these days they're made with themselves sometimes. Um, 
but the first ones... There's a whole history behind it. Was it you that I was talking to about that code, the Hidden Language of Computers book? I can't remember. Um, I forget who I was talking with about this. Oops, in here. Uh, come here. If you want to really dig into that question, and this is a this is a very approachable book, but this will walk you through how you go from the ones and zeros on a computer to actually getting into programming, um, like the the full kind of all the way through it. Um, first time I read it, I only made it through like four chapters. Second time I read it, I made it through like twelve chapters, and the third time I read it, I finally made it all the way through because it gets kind of intense. Um, but the 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 short answer is, at some point, it starts with somebody entering ones and zeros into a computer, basically manually. Um, but we've had enough people, but we, you can copy that piece of code and then build on top of it. And then that's what you get to like machine language, which is, if you ever look up machine language, it's... Machine language. Oh, I was hoping for you to see like examples. Where's uh here? Machine yeah, sorry, machine code. So basically you have a whole bunch of people doing stuff like this. And then from machine language you get into assembly language. G -A -G. Not spelling that right either. But so assembly language gives you another level of abstraction so it looks like humans can read this a little bit easier. And on assembly language, you can build languages like C. And it's like, so it keep, you keep stacking up, making it easier and easier to, to get to. That's how they're written. Um, but like all modern languages are written on a foundation of other languages that we don't really mess with that much anymore. But it all comes down to at some point, somebody's basically sitting there flicking switches to put ones and zeros into a computer. Um, <laughs> eh. I mean, you gotta go, you gotta go. I gotta go soon. Like, to sleep. 4.30, yeesh. Uh, I would be passing out. Okay, so we did that, so this should be... Alright, so we can go either way. Now, how do we get it to call? That. So packages, it's calling the packages of words to say, which should be able to hit. Oh, if it's in itself, do you do? There's no way that works. Nope. All these stuff, man, it's just, it doesn't give me from dot import hello world. Attempt relative import path with no known parrot package. You can go to hell. Oh man, I ran into this earlier today and it was the death of me. Wow, this isn't working at all anymore. Oh, that was this one. See, that works. But I can't do it from... I 
Okay, that worked. Uh, 11.30. Right about. But I have the tired. So that works. Wait a minute. Is this going to work? I would put that in. You go. It certainly seems like that should work. It does not, though. No module. Oh! Wait a minute. We're going to go try and find packages again. Find packages. Uh, but I don't understand how, how that would make a difference. Because the package is the top level thing, not the module level thing. Right? Determining package name. Yep, cool. Whoa, did not like that. Is it just fine packages? Let's try that. Can I determine package name for spec? Hello world CLI. This worked last time. Wait a minute. Hi, CLI. Why is this not showing me where I want it to show me? Oh, because it's up here somewhere. Yeah, so all I did, that's wrong. Maybe, uh, I think I understand. Let's try this. Find packages. How about this? I need to go look at that cow thing I'm a big. Oh, I got too many tabs. It was on GitHub. Is this it? This is it. Yeah, that's it. All right, set up. Type ignore. This is not it. Oh, that works. Okay. Still not finding it. Ah, come on. I'm about to bail on this one. Oh, how to go scoring system? Right. Well, you'd probably do database stuff for that too, right? Or just, are you talking about like the method, like what counts as a score? Oh, this is not the right thing. Cow, say. Python. Actually, what is this? I want to see this article.
show me homepage. Set up. Find packages with the thing on it. Oh yeah, yeah I got that to work. Okay, so that worked. So we're in Calse. You've only got main. Okay, that's why. From future print. Beavis. Jeez. Oh, I didn't know all these were in here. <gasps> this is awesome. That's awesome. Oh, that counts as score, then I have a database that saves it and uploads it to the leaderboard. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is there's an app called Calse. Hello. That if you just tell it what to say, the cow says hello. But apparently it looks like there's other stuff in there. Which I did not know. Oh, there's no manual for it. How do you get to it? All right, we're gonna go dive into some code. So, how do you switch it? Arg strip. Somewhere in here, there's got to be a way to say. Here, read me. Let's look at the read me first. Nothing. CLI version. Chars, Beavis. Tux, try. Cal say help. Nope. Cal say help. Nope. Can't say. Get something more easier, Miss Cal. How do you switch it? If version equals args. How about this? Cal say Beavis, hello. Nope. How do you switch it? There's gotta be a way to switch it. Def about. Cal say about. Nope. About. Well, how do you, I don't know how to do it. Example, import calse. Oh, maybe you can only do it with Python. Yeah, I bet you I bet you can't do it from the command line. It works in Python, but Oh, that's a bummer. Oh well. Cow about? No. Nope. Good try. Yeah, the thing I was looking at was so I think so down here defines this command line, and then if the first argument is version or is in args, print version exit zero. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything. Which is it? Here, hang on. Let's see where else is this 
See, that only exists one time in the file. That only exists one time in the file. It's importing everything. Yeah, it just calls a CLI. Yeah, I don't think you can do it directly, it looks like. It looks like you gotta be in Python to do it. Which is a bummer, because some of these look really cool. Like milk looks terrifying, actually, is what milk looks like. Milk looks like. So why, oh why? So packages went in. Package, no module. I guess I should see what the actual error is that it's giving me, right? Uh, actually, let's see what this says. First, let's see how Python assists the path. But, I mean, it's sitting right next to it. Find files in package. License, this is not going to help me. Main, so we're in here. So we have to do from dot hello world, right? I mean, that's gotta be it. Python three. Main. Go. So it's got to be this. So that works. But then it doesn't work when you package it. Which I do not understand. Pipx install force dot if that's around examples this is not what I was talking about programs to try Uh, let's look at this. Jar tech, cookie cutter, flake, Python, whoops. My computer is dying, my computer is dying. 
Somehow I open bookmarks. I got no idea what's happening right now. Python flake eight. Let's go look at some of the source code and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Set up pi. They do it weird. Great. We're not gonna look at that. Uh, what was the other one? Black. apparently. Oracle's points and define in the same way. Hosted either the tail or the snake. Wouldn't that just make the snake have a bunch of zeros following it? Make var equal points and define it the same way. I don't, you lost me there with some spelling. Yeah, I'm not sure how you're set up. We'd have to look at it. equals points. Yeah, I, I don't have enough context to know. Ah, don't worry about spelling. Like, I'm the same way. It's typing and spelling both. I, I'm not good at either. So don't feel bad about that at all. Um, setup. Okay, so this looks like a legit setup file. Pi modules, black version. Package data packages. Black D black. Entry points, console scoop. Black patched main. All right, let's see if we can find that. Yo! I can't figure out how to do this stuff anymore. Uh, Bob, yeah, not tonight. Absolutely some other time. I'm about to pass out. Um, hey, grading's done. Nice. Uh, I'd be happy to take a look. Uh, I just, I can't do it right now. <laughs> yeah, it is late. Uh, I want to spend just a couple more minutes seeing if I can figure out why this one thing isn't doing what I think it should be doing. And then I will either solve that or I will go to sleep. One of the two things will happen. So in black, wait, what was it calling? Hang on. Where'd my setup file go? Setup file, okay, we're gonna open a couple files here. Setup file is here. And then we're gonna look at here. It's calling black patched main. But like that's not a thing. Source black. Patch main. From black import patch main. Whoa, hang on. This doesn't make any sense at all. There's nothing in there. 
Oh, there's like build stuff going on, isn't there? Oh god, I can't ever figure out how the stuff works. Keep it bad by the bed, yeah. Um So the the problem with this module right now, so if I run it from the command line right here, well if I go in the right directory, uh which is words to say. If I run Python three main some names, it says hello sum and hello names. That's great. So that's working. Everything's working with it. It's awesome. But when I try and package it up through this method, to, which is turns it into a command line app that you can just call it without having to be in the specific directory. And I do say, hello world, some names. It throws this error. Which I don't understand why it's doing that, because I thought this should be in there. Um, but let me see, say hello world, CLI, right? So that's a setup. something tells me that if I go in here there's hello world and it's right here it's right here there's my code why it's not finding that I don't know somehow it's not on the path like I understand kind of what's going on it's not on the path somehow um I don't understand why that is the case. And so I'm trying to look around and see if I can find other things that show me why that's the case. But these are more complicated than mine uh, and aren't helpful. Shell functions. I don't know these. What is this? Shell fun tools. Oh, functional programming. Is that the same thing? Yeah. But I'm about to call it a night because I will just take one more quick. Oh, actually, this is a very small package. So let's look at this. So here's the setup file, which is not opening. which actually doesn't look like it has, like a script maybe? I don't know. Here, look in here and see what's going on. Okay, it's got a couple different things. So filter, let's look at filter. From FT commands filter, import filter. FT, that's going down a directory, commands. I don't understand. I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut it. I'm, I'm tapping out. Hey, start with tic-tac-toe. Like, that's, it's all progress. Everything you're doing. Like, right now your working tic-tac-toe game is better than my, like all I'm doing is making a command line to print hello world right now. And it's taken me hours. So like, and I've been doing this for a while. Uh, so don't, don't, don't knock yourself for that. Um, oh, I really want to solve this, but I just can't figure out. And I just, and like, this is just one of those things where I just don't know enough about it. And I can't find somewhere online. Somebody has described this problem, but I can't find it. Um, or I haven't yet found it. Let me put it that way. Um, where is that? Cal thing again. Hang on. We'll look, one more. We're gonna do one more look at Cal say, and this is how I end up staying up till five in the morning. Um, but this really will be the last one because I am on it. So, is there anything else in this setup file? 
See, I love things like this because it's like I can get my head around all this because there's a really small number of things. Don't know what classifiers are. Zip safe, long description, description, packages we're doing, description, entry points we're doing. Author, like none of the rest of this stuff. And they're doing CLI, but CLI doesn't call out to anything else. Wait a minute. Back up. Something just went weird. Causeway.main.cli. Oh. Okay, we gotta try something else. Because there's no direct main. Yes, there is. It's right there. Never mind. Found it. And then there's CLI. So it's just calling straight to that. And this file doesn't call anything else. See, I need this to call something else next to it. Okay, that's going to do it for now. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> All right. See y'all. Have a good evening. Uh, we'll catch you. I'll be back on tomorrow, I'm sure. Eight or so Eastern time. And then we'll uh, we'll do it again soon. See y'all. Bye-bye.